Hey, good people. Welcome back to Beauty and the Frizz. My name is Kara, and whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by. I don't know why I did that move. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with, and I did it again. <laughs> thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. It is another day of Frizzmas, and I am so excited about this video because it is a collab with my great, great friend, Ashley, from Dr. Ash and Her Makeup, and today, we are talking about the five most disappointing launches this year. I tried to say 10, but she was like, can we keep it to five? So we're gonna do five, but I got 10 in my mind. But if you wanna hear what I think were the most disappointing releases this year, keep watching this video, let me know what you think. And if makeup is your therapy, your passion, and you wanna connect with other enthusiasts and just talk about makeup because you don't have nobody else to talk about makeup with because they might think you're a little bit crazy, this is the channel for you. Consider joining the community because I would love to have you back. All right, let's get started. So y'all, Frismas is going strong. I am proud. I didn't know how I was gonna pull this off, but I'm pulling it off, so yes. Ashley from Dr. Ash and Her Makeup, she has a doctorate in pharmacy and she loves makeup. That's how you get Dr. Ash and Her Makeup. Eyeshadow is her jam. That is my girl, okay? We bonded over Mama Pat and our love for just all things Pat McGrath, who I'm probably gonna be talking about in this video. Anyway, we found each other and that's all she wrote. So we were talking about it on Marco Polo. And we were like, let's do a collab on this because we need to do it. This is a two part collab because we're gonna be talking about the most disappointing releases as well as the five best releases of this year. I'm excited. That's gonna be tomorrow though, by the way. Now, here's the thing, the items that are the worst releases, you'd hope that you wouldn't own them but I, I do think I own a couple of them. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Now, these are not gonna be in any particular order. I, it's hard for me to rate makeup, you know what I mean? But we're gonna go ahead. Let me pull some of this up on my phone so I can remind myself of why I said it's the worst. Number one, and this was a damn shame. Hold on, let me pull it up so I can get mad. Urban Decay Prints Collection. What are we doing? What were we doing? What were we thinking? Here's my thing. Urban Decay, I don't necessarily know what is going on with the brand. The last thing I bought was the Wild West palette, which I actually like the Wild West palette. I bought that on Macari. There are some staples by Urban Decay that are in my collection. The eyeshadow primer potion. I'm using that daily. My 24 seven eyeliners daily. I have some lipsticks that are nice. Don't use that daily. The Game of Thrones collection. I should have bought that entire collection, but I bought the palette and a few liners. And I still love it. But the Prince collection, such a letdown. I'm, I'm not sure who from the estate okayed this. This would not have red prints to me looking at it. You know, you just put his eye on there and then the artist sign and then we just gonna go ahead and call it prints. No ma'am, no ma'am. I am just so disappointed. And like, how could you do that to this man's name? And then you put it on sale so freaking quickly. Like it's just, disappointing because when I think of Prince, like I love Prince, but you know who really loves Prince? My friend Aileen from A Merch Beauty. Like her story and her love for Prince is unmatched. And I know that Prince rolled over. I don't know if he was cremated. I don't know if he was buried. He rolled over or tossed over if it was ashes. I, it, because no, no. No, 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 and no. This does not scream prints. There were no vibrant purples. Purple, according to Aileen, wasn't even his favorite color. I think his favorite color was orange. So even if you went that route, I could see it. But I'm gonna have to find Aileen's video, honestly, because 
she built her own Prince palette. And then she talked about like little other combinations that like they could have done. Like she talked about a lip trio, like the little red Corvette lip trio and some other things. And I was just like, I feel like Urban Decay really missed out on an opportunity. And not just about money, but like, let me show y'all something. Hold on, hold on. Cause like, you know, like, I love music. I love me some music. I love me some music. And the fact that I could get my hands on this this fast, like, do you see this? Do you see it? People, oh, this is people. But what I'm trying to say is people that don't even have a love for makeup might have bought the collection because they love Prince. They love Prince. Like the fact that I still even have this magazine. I don't even know how I got this magazine. I know I'm in the middle of a rant, but this was disappointing. I grew up listening to Prince. I know a lot of people did. So I was interested, but when I saw the trailer and then I saw, I feel like I saw some women in some shadows with some fringes. I was like, no, mm -mm. this doesn't even have the same musical vibe as Prince. Really? I had to go poop. Okay. But why are you limping? You must really have to go. Mama, we come in here and ask about dessert. Don't tell them about the house. Don't tell them about the green beans. That was the whole thing. That was the whole thing. Mom? Guys. Am I mom frozen? Hello. <laughs> Just come on. It, no, come on. I'm, I, I'm tired. No, I told you something. I heard you. So don't. It's my idea. Oh. So it's like it's not like you made had the idea. I didn't know that. Why don't you help Mark out in the bathroom? No, I'm just joking. Go, just go. Wait. No. I'm glad they came in because I was getting mad. Shaka Delica. Now you know what? I've never even looked at these shade names. Shaka Delica. Was that a Prince? Okay, maybe that was a Prince thing. So dark. I can't do this anymore. I don't want to look at it. It's actually making me upset. I don't think I have anything else to say about that. If you like the Prince collection, I'm sorry. This is just my personal opinion. And I could continue to go on about that cyber palette that Urban Decay came out with because you know what? No, I'm not going to do that because I will say this. If you are not into indie makeup, I think the cyber palette may have looked very attractive. No, no, you, you don't know what you're missing. That was a two for one. Now I'm going to number two. I don't want to put this on the list and y'all know I love me some milk. I don't know if this was a forced release. I don't know if there was a contract involved. I don't know if it was just like, hmm, we have to put this amount of palettes out, but this wasn't it. Not necessarily because of the quality. Now, let me just go ahead and say, okay, this is the brunette palette. As you can see, I've made this palette amazing by adding these purples because I happen to love brown and purple. But the two shades that were here before and I will post a pic, unusable. How many blend out shades do we need? Because I've got a blend out shade in the shade cork. Now the quality of this is great. And honestly, Melt, y'all could have just did this and I might've been into it. And what made me into it was this shade right here that I really like. It is the shade Bourbon. Melt does not make the best shimmers. They don't. Never raved about the shimmers. It's more about the color story. And I think that this had the potential to be a grungy neutral palette and it wasn't. The packaging. We just gonna write brunette and have no design. We won't have no design. We won't have no, no emblems, no embossings, nothing, nothing. Who are you? Who are you? That's what I want to know. Who are you? Cause I don't know. It just had the potential to be a just 
Do I have a grungy neutral palette? What would make a grungy neutral palette? I need to think about that. I need to develop one. But like these two, like these shades are great. Uh, bourbon and stout, I love that. But you know what, what took it up a notch for me? Me adding my Give Me Glow shimmers. Like this shade right here. Now this palette means something. Now there's something great. We've got a purple matte here to kind of, and trying to, listen, repack a matte, that is not my forte. He talking about yes he won while he's on the toilet. You need to come on. Now this is a story here, but what was there before, that was not it. And then y'all wanna come up with some brushes to go with it? No, no. I think I had a gift card or something like that and bought this because I was being a melt stand. A stand. I'm not saying I'm not, but if you watched my uh, Amor e Mariposa's, my second video on that, with the lesson that I learned, didn't need this, didn't need this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that to the side. Now, will I use the palette the way I changed it? Yes, ma'am. But the, the issue is that when you're spending money on things, you should not have to change it. You should not have to alter it because you're spending your money on it, you know? But that's just what I chose to do. And I've chosen to do that with several things in my collection to make them usable for me because the way that I am, when I look at my collection and see something that I don't like, I, I physically get mad and I want to throw it in the trash. I'm not having a Roblox night because there's a dis there is a Disney show coming on tonight that I want you to see. Just a little one, like like this, like this kind. That's hurting my nose. Mom, like this, this kind mm -hmm. that. I don't know because I don't know. Number three, let me tell y'all what else was a mess this year. Not that Hourglass hasn't been a mess. And the thing about Hourglass, it's the brand that I hate to love. It's a brand that I hate to like because Hourglass has created these blushes that I really, really like. I really like their blushes. I really like their strobe highlighter and I really like the ambient powder. I have not purchased from Hourglass in a very long time, very long in my makeup life, probably like a year. Um, because they're playing a lot of games. Last year, I think it was with the ambient powder and they tried to act like it was darker, but it wasn't and all this kind of stuff. It's just like, okay, this is just too much. People are playing top notch for your products and either you don't have any people of color on your team or you don't care about having people of color purchase your products because you thought that you were gonna dim the lights and do some trickery and then put this powder trio on someone deeper and say it's deeper. And it wasn't. And that was a mess. And that's when I was just like, nope, I, I just can't. Wow, pop. Not yet. What I'm here to talk about is that eyeshadow curator collection. Now, I, can you close the door? Watch out. Oh yeah, watch out. I don't know why you felt that your little five pants were gonna be worth as much as a Pat McGrath mothership, you have to be out of your mind. I would buy the Utopian Dream at that price over buying those five shadows. I didn't watch any reviews. I don't know how they performed. They're trying to mix and match. No thank you. No thank you. $30 for one of those little pants? And what, uh, that's not even most of the makeup. I don't know why this was perceived to be a good idea. I don't know who is on your team where you feel as though that's okay. Cause you're already in the doghouse. I will buy a Tom Ford quad at regular price over that. I just don't understand what the purpose was. I don't understand the, 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 I'm a speechless. I saw that and I was just like, what is this? And why are we doing it? I'm you have to poop too? Mm -hmm. Marky just came and pooped. Ah, really bad. I'm not sure what else to say about that. I don't own it. I won't own it. I just thought it was just nothing. I thought it was nothing. They lost their way on that. Just like Urban Decay, y'all lost y'all way. Mel, I don't know what Mel was doing because they, they clearly haven't lost their way. They did, lo they lost their way with the pricing of the holiday collection. They, they lost it with that. They were out of touch with the reality of people's financial situations, but they have not lost their way with their vision. But that, no, 
that was not melt. That was some alternative melt. That was like some alter ego melt. Cause I don't know what that was. And I don't know what this hourglass was. And that's number three. Let's go ahead and talk about Mama Pat. Cause I just don't want to forget. Why would you, huh? Let me get my thoughts. Hold on. I help August. Why would you create the most beautiful mothership packaging? <laughs> the worst palette. The trickery. The promo. The ponies. And y'all know how I felt about those ponies and that promo and that color. The greens, the oranges. Yes, how may I help you? Okay, that's an interesting face. The greens, the oranges, the purples. You won't tell me. You will not tell me that it was all about this shade right here. You will not tell me that. Yes, this is pretty. Yes, this is beautiful. Yes, I don't mind having it, but I thought it was a joke. When I saw the reveal, I, I was like, oh, April Fools. Oh, but it wasn't April 1st. It's not April. It, was, it wasn't. Did I buy this for full price? Absolutely not. This flip shade, gorgeous. I am not saying that it was It was not. Just call it Divine Rose 3. Do not call it a utopian dream because it was a utopian reality for me that I cannot stand brands no matter what. I just can't do that anymore. And I still did it. I still did it with Mel after learning that lesson with Pat. And it's like, I don't know how many times, like I said, this is not a regret that I have it because I didn't pay full price. Somebody actually sold it on Macari and I had a balance. So I ended up paying like $36 out of pocket, which works for me because I don't have to look at it and be upset. Beautiful quality uh, in this palette, beautiful, beautiful shades. It's just that many of us have been expressing our uh boredom with pink and if you love pink and i get that i don't mind pink at all it's just that i have divine rose one which is like a muted down palette i have divine rose two which was definitely the palette of 20 uh 2020 i think it, for me like just that was the first time i had experienced a pat like a Pat McGrath launch, you know what I mean? And I was so excited and just thrilled and was so happy to get it. And let's not lessen what that was by putting this out. Like, give me something different. Cause this purple, as, as beautiful as it is, it did not wow me. Then you're gonna put out this eye pin. Now I understand that the intensifies or whatever is cool and people like that. But I didn't like that if you bought this palette at launch with the pen in that bundle, the pen was really only worth like seven bucks if I did the math correctly. But if you bought the pen on its own, I think it was being sold for like 30. I was just like, that's crazy to me. It really, really frustrated me. There's just other colors that, that can be used and that have not been done. And I think that with Divine Rose 1 and then Divine, or Divine Rose and Divine Rose 2 and then this, I think people were just really waiting for something different. And with the increase of people knowing about indie brands and duo chromes and seeing all that stuff, it's like, we wanted that from Pat. We want, because we know she can do duo chromes. We know that from VR Sextra Terrestrial. We know that from the corruption shade that was in Star Wars. We know that from one of the shades, I think is a duo chrome that was in uh, the Celestial Divinity palette. Like. We know she can do that. So like we want that in the Pat format, not in the indie format. Like I wanted it, I want both. I want Pat's format formula. I want the indie formula. I wanted it from Pat because I know VR Sexual Terrestrial was just such a beautiful, beautiful shade. Like I feel like I'm slurring my speech. Like it was beautiful. And even this little cousin shade, I can't remember what it's called. This is beautiful too. It's just not as harsh you know what i mean utopian dream just made me think of like a rainbow palette and i know that pat's not going to give us a traditional rainbow and nor do i want her to but i was thinking we were going to get a blue or green like she doesn't really do a whole lot of blues she doesn't do a whole lot of greens and i was just really really looking forward to it i was so excited because pat took us on a little you know, she been taking us on some trips before she gives us what we want. 
I think she kind of made up for it with the Celestial Odyssey palette, but I, my excitement was a little lackluster for that. And it may have stemmed off of here. I just didn't have that, that Pat McGrath excitement. I don't know if it's gonna return. And it really makes me sad. After reading about Pat McGrath and like I said, not even knowing she was a black woman, you know what I'm saying? That's how much I don't know about makeup. I bought every palette she had. I found them all. I know I spent more than what those palettes were worth on some of them. And now I'm like, I don't care if I don't have every palette. And I hate that because that was something I was so proud of. So this was a serious disappointment for me. And that's what I'll say about that. All right, number five, I'm gonna give it to the Max Sims collection. As someone who has played Sims in the past, I just don't understand why there wasn't a green shade in there for that little diamond that, that hangs over them. I think I was just a bit flabbergasted. Like, well, what makes this a Sims palette? I just was really confused. And if you guys follow Doodles by the Bunny, I believe she redesigned those palettes to really reflect what a Sims palette would look like. like Sims is colorful, but that green is like, to me, the staple shade of the Sims. I don't know what that palette was supposed to reflect. And that's pretty much all I have to say about it because I never looked at it again. I never considered it. I was just like, I don't even know why they came out with the palette. Like, I don't know if a new Sims game came out. I don't, I just don't understand what it was supposed to be. And please forgive me if like, I'm just not seeing something that, is obvious, but I don't understand. Like, was it supposed to be different skin tones? Cause they were just two neutral palettes and I, yeah, I don't understand what this was supposed to be. The only thing that looked like Sims was the cover, the packaging, cause it said Sims and it had the little green diamond. So I don't know. I, that was just very tragic. Like, you know, I hate when I see brands like come out with things and you feel like, damn, they really missed the opportunity to even pull it. Not that I want you to pull at my heartstrings, but pull at people's nostalgia and heartstrings with these collections. Like do it right, do it right or just leave it alone. And I just, I don't know what that was. They could have called it so many other things like basic palette or boring palette or we just had to come out with a palette palette. I don't know, but Sims was not it. I think those were my five most disappointing releases this year, but I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all know about some other honorable mentions because I, I can't leave this video without mentioning some other things. So Ashley, I'm sorry, and this might be cheating, the ColourPop NBA collection. That's fine. Do you need to take a shower to cool down? Excuse me, watch my drink. Are you sure? No, and if I hear you shout like that again, we're gonna have a problem. We were just playing whack-a-mole and then- Whack-a-mole. I mean whack-a-mole and- Whack-a-mole. And then, and then- Thank you. We can't have dessert. No, no one's no. having dessert. No one's having dessert until I'm done. No, no. I don't know. No, when you're done. I, I'm not sure. As if ColourPop needed to have more releases, you wanna come out with an NBA collection? I just hated it. I hated it. I hated it with a black hate. I just was like, come on. And that's what I'm talking about. Like color poppy, like hit or miss. And it's like, miss, like, no, no, we don't need that. We don't need collections every week. So if like you ran out of an idea and you don't have a collection for one week, like I'm okay with that. And I think the rest of us are. Because if I wanna make a, I don't know, we don't have a basketball team. Chicago Bulls are standing out to me. Like I can get a red and black eyeshadow. Like I don't need a palette for that. I mean the only people I feel like would buy those are like avid basketball fans, I guess, and ColourPop fanatics, which I'm not, I'm neither. So I just felt like that collection was so not necessary. I was not here for that. Honorable mention number two, Oh, I have three honorable mentions. <laughs> so number two is the um, Natasha Denona Zendo. I know some people really like that palette, but that palette just did not gel with me. I don't know why, but it didn't. The swatches looked great, but something about that palette just didn't work. And I rarely return makeup. Oh, hold on, I got four honorable mentions. I rarely return makeup and um, it just, such a miss and I surprisingly like retro so much. I don't know what it was about Zendo that I just couldn't get with, but I just couldn't. And while we're talking about Tasha, let's talk about 
baby glam. If there's a mini glam, why do we need a baby glam with three big pans when you can have mini glam that has five small ones that give you a much more complete look and a better look? I can understand the mini metropolis. I, I can get behind that because people may not want to buy the big metropolis palette. So I can get behind that metropolis palette, but that baby glam really frosted my cookies. I just was so like, what, this is so blah, what is this? So that's Tasha. So the last one that I have to say is disappointing and I know some people are not gonna agree with me, but that Patrick Ta palette, no. I'm not really sure what I was doing wrong because I wanted to love the, the various textures. I wanted to love the creams. I wanted to love it all. The creams were great, but those shimmers, I don't know. They just were not shimming. And I just felt like they made my eyelids look terrible. I just wasn't a fan of those toppery shimmers that were there. I felt like, no, that's how I felt. And I sold that palette. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And I love me some eyeshadow and I love me some less work with different formulas. But that one, I knew I would never ever use it again. I wanted to love it because when you listen to Patrick Ta talk about his products, they sound so good. You know what I mean? And the blushes are good. The lipsticks are good. You know, and I love how he is about his products and he's he's you know he's excited about them and he knows what he's talking about but on my eyes no it was not showing up that way and I've seen people do great looks but on me it just was not I just did not vibe with that palette you know if you are a makeup enthusiast these launches really do mean something to us. And I know that when you talk about if you are a makeup enthusiast and you're talking to someone that's not into makeup, they really don't understand because we're just putting colorful powders on our eyes and our face and it means something to us. It does something for our spirit. It does something for our soul and our heart, you know? So it does mean a lot and we do have our feelings involved. And I've always said this, but I've learned that makeup really it transcends beyond being makeup and you see all kinds of really serious issues we see in all aspects of our lives, including makeup. Like, so it is more than that. It is more than that to us. We get excited about things and we get disappointed by things. And if you don't agree with like how I feel about any of these launches, like that's totally fine too. You could totally disagree. And that's one of the most beautiful things I think about the makeup community is that this is a form of art and we see things differently. What may be beautiful to me might not be your cup of tea and vice versa. And um, I love that. So please feel free to comment. What were the most disappointing launches for you this year? I would really, really love to know. I can't wait to see Ashley's video. I'm sure that we may have a couple of the same products on our list we'll see i will link her video in the description box of course and i really hope you go and check out her channel she's so cute she is so fun and she's somebody that when i watch them like her smile just shows how genuine she feels about makeup and how much she loves it and i just love that spirit because that's how i feel like i know y'all can tell i be happy as i don't know what but yeah, she's like that too. And she's great. Really, really knowledgeable, a lot more knowledgeable than I am, I would say about like brands and formulas and textures. Like when we talk, she can tell me uh, and elaborate a lot more than I can. Or if I say, this isn't working for me, she can say like, I had an eye primer that wasn't working. She's like, well, maybe it's too this, maybe it's too emollient. I'm like, well, what the hell, you know what that means? But you know what I'm saying? like. She really helps me with a lot of that stuff. And if you are not subscribed to her, I would just say check her out because I do think that you would enjoy her channel. And she makes really beautiful looks. So yes, thank you all so much for taking out some of your time and hanging out with me for another day of Frismas. I hope this was therapy for you because it definitely was for me getting all this off my chest about these makeup releases. So until I see you again tomorrow, which we're gonna talk about the five best releases of 2021. Be gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice. Stay safe. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.